<laughs> Morgan again. Uh, oh, okay, so it's a pleasure to have Lev Weidman here. I mean, <clears throat> so unfortunately we can't host him in person, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's great to have him sort of virtually here. And you talk about virtual things in this talk, of course. So uh, Lev is a really an expert in, in quantum information, quantum measurements, quantum, anything that relates to quantum, also quantum paradoxes, of which he'll tell you probably a bit today. So he's really one of the leading experts on that. And he found many interesting sort of paradoxes and how can they be resolved and so on, and how we touch on fundamental aspects of quantum mechanics. So I won't go from the entire list, but he'll probably mention a few of those. It's kept on called the Ali Suri bomb paradox. There's a measurement that you paradox that you have on the spin one half system actually can become very, very large. So he, he introduced the concept of interaction with free measurements. He also he was also involved with the commercial groups as well, looking at as, as, a, as a theoretical guide. He, he looked at interferometers, of course, with robust weak measurements. And so the list goes on and on and on. So just a, as a brief a biography, so <clears throat> he, he grew up in, in uh, St. Petersburg, I mean, and he, or Leningrad at the time. And, and, and he was um, already as a youth, he was very, very good in, in physics. So he was one of the um, leading stars in uh, the, the Soviet team in, in the physics Olympiad. So he came in number one in the all Soviet, in all, all the high schools in the Soviet Union. And then, and also he went to national Olympics um, shortly thereafter, number four in all, worldwide. So he knows lots and lots of physics, physics problems, also very hard physics problems. <laughs> so, um, so he's really, yeah. And so, uh, so, so, yeah, so they, he, his family immigrated to Israel and then, um, he, he, he got his bachelor's in, in, uh, in mathematics and physics, and then he, he, he got his uh, master's in advisement and his PhD at Tel Aviv University, where he started to work really in, 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 in depth and in, in quantum measurements and quantum aspects. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and uh, he's been in Tel Aviv basically ever since. He, 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 and and, and he, um, he, he also held positions elsewhere, so he, he went was a visiting professor in the quantum computation group at Oxford. And he was at the KITP, visiting professor there, Kelly Institute for Radical Physics, Santa Barbara, visiting professor there. And so on. He was also in University of South Carolina, visiting professor. Um, so he really has a very, uh, he really discovered many, many effects, and, and we're looking forward to hearing this talk. So just, just as, as always, I mean, I'll just sort of mention this to everybody, of course. So um, if there are any Questions that because you don't understand particular aspects, which is really crucial, uh, please do ask. Don't hesitate to just ask your question, even if it's in the middle of a talk. If it's a more sort of general, mundane question, which maybe is not too relevant, you can ask it at the end. And at the end, we'll go for the chat box and go for the questions. And also, of course, you can just raise your hand, ask questions. You can just unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, so without further ado, Lev, it's all yours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Zor, for the introduction. Um, uh, I think, again, you, you said so, but uh, my main in interest in foundations of quantum mechanics um, then on the side, understanding foundation helps to find some interesting effects, which might find some practical application. But really, I want to understand um, how the nature is, because I strongly believe that the nature is absolutely quantum. Uh, so the foundations of quantum mechanics uh, um, will tell us uh, about uh, our nature. I understand that you had um, even more than one talks about uh, quantum miracles. Uh, you had a talk about months ago about quantum mysteries uh, from Igor Pikovsky. And his mysteries and my miracles are not very far apart. It's more or less the same, the same kind of story. Um, the difference is uh, that Igor described this strange quantum phenomena and um, explain how we can uh, use this strange, strange uh, behavior for practical purposes. And uh, I go from 
other angle. I look on these strange phenomena and I don't want to have them this strange. Uh, so um, I, I want to find a way to understand them. Uh, because of this, we might have um, some disagreements. Um, let me see if you hear his... Now, quantum mechanics is fundamentally probabilistic. We have other probabilistic theories, stock market or whatever. Uh, there's nothing special about that. But quantum mechanics is irreducibly probabilistic, meaning that there is no reason for these, uh, for these probabilities. They don't appear uh, from any lack of knowledge or complexity. They're just inherently probabilistic and we can never get rid of them. So I completely agree with Igor that there is no reason for this probabilities. Uh, but I disagree that we can never get rid of them. I really believe that the world is deterministic. Maybe not the world, the physical universe. And this is what leads me to these parallel uh, worlds. The only way to, to get uh, rid of prob uh, probability, which I think it's not a good property, uh, is uh, these parallel worlds. Let me just quote some uh, people who will say that uh, probability randomness is not so good. Uh, it was pretty long time ago when uh, um, 440 BC, BC, nothing occurred at random, but everything for a reason and by necessity. Then uh, there is a Laplacian world in which everything is deterministic. And even uh, not, uh, even now, maybe not, not so recently, people consider uh, that uh, uh, randomness is not a good property for science. Only after a long and repeated failure may we entertain the hypothesis that the failure to find deterministic laws does not represent a lack of imagination or diligence on our part, but reflects the fact that the nature is not deterministic. So, um, I uh, believe that the nature is deterministic. And uh, uh, so, the, these parallel worlds resolve uh, this problem and um, resolve some other problems too. So, let me start uh, with miracles. Um, first, I will explain miracles. We have three miracles. Uh, as or mentioned, Elitzur Survivman bomb tester, uh, interaction free measurement. Then I will talk about the impossible winning of correlation game, which also were mentioned in, uh, this is kind of bell inequalities and teleportation, which I think is a miracle. And um, explaining what are all these miracles and then briefly explaining what I mean by, uh, by parallel words, many word interpretation, um, I will show how all these miracles are resolved um, in the framework of many world interpretation. So, uh, miracle number one, Elitzur uh, one, Weidman bomb tester. About 30 years ago, uh, Avi Elitzur asked me uh, the following problem. Suppose we have an object, kind of a bomb, a super bomb. If we touch it, if we look on it, look on it at touching it with photons, it explodes. The only way it interacts with the environment is through explosion. No other way. So, and the, uh, the problem is to find it. Of course, it's easy. We can uh, shine light on it and explode it and we'll find it. The, the question, how to find it without exploding it? And this uh, device, which we found, which is in fact a very simple quantum device, um, finds uh, this bomb, uh, like super uh, sensitive detector. We can find it without uh, the detector um, finding the light we used to find it. So this is a miracle number one. Miracle number two, an impossible game. Let me show you kind of this uh, type of this game, which 
I will uh, present later. We have Alice and Bob far away. And um, there is an external team which came to them, asked them questions. There are not no many different questions. The question might be only of two types, question X or question Y, both Alice and Bob. And the answer might be also only of the two kinds, one or minus one. Now, so Alice and Bob, far away, in a particular moment of time, somebody come and ask question, one, only one question, X or Y question. And they have to immediately give an answer, so they don't have time to communicate. They're not allowed to communicate. And if they're far away, they cannot communicate due to special relativity, because there is no time uh, for them uh, to ask um, the other person what he was asked what he said. Now, to win the game, they have to uh, answer in particular ways. This is a table, the winning table. If it's happened to be that they got two questions X, the product must, must be minus one. If they ask any other combination, one X or no X, the, the product of the answer should be plus one. So they allowed to prepare to, to make some strategy. So they try, then trying to think, okay, let's uh, Alice will say plus for question X. Then of course, Bob has to uh, give answer minus. So if Alice gives plus for X, then Bob has to uh, give answer uh, plus for Y, because to get X, A, Y, B correct. Now, uh, since uh, X is already fixed for Bob, then Y for Alice is also fixed. It might be minus, only then we can get one here. So, uh, in fact, Y is fixed, it must, must be minus, and, and Y is also fixed, it might be minus, but if it doesn't work like this. Uh, if you see Y is fixed, uh, but minus, here we get uh, minus, so we can, so this doesn't work. There are not too many possibilities, so we can look on all of them to see that there is no really way to solve this um, problem and to, pre to, to be prepared in such a way that you win always. There is a simple mathematical proof for this. To fulfill all this equation, we can, uh, we need, uh, if they all write, then the product of all left side and product of all right side should be also correct. But if we look on product of all left side, XA appear twice, XB appear twice, YB twice, YA twice. So we have squares. So clearly the left side, the product of all left sides must be, um, um, must be positive. On the right side, it's minus one. So, this game is impossible to win. Somehow, using quantum device, not exactly this game, but a similar game, uh, a team can win. The third miracle is teleportation. I think everyone will agree that this Star Trek type of uh, teleportation is a miracle. So, quantum it's not exactly this, but something of this kind, and we will see that it, it can be done. It's still, when it's done, even in a quantum way, it, it is an, a miracle. Okay, miracle. Miracle is something which cannot uh, have a reasonable explanation. So, first we have to decide what is good explanation. Now, for me, good explanation is local explanation. If I want to move something, I have to move it really by hand. I have to touch it and then move it. This seems to me good explanation. And I'm not alone. Newton, who uh, um, found this gravity law, which is not like this. Gravity law now me, in fact, there is a gravity between every object. There is a gravity between my hand and the moon. If I move it, so the gravity changes immediately. And so somehow this slow gravitational law is an action at a distance. 
But Newton, even he found it and he didn't believe it can be true. He said it, it is inconceivable that in an inanimate matter affect other matter without mutual contact. No man who has in philosophical matter as a complete faculty of thinking can ever fall into it. I think even stronger uh, supporter of this local view is Einstein. Principle of local action. If A and B are spatially distant things, then an external influence on A has no immediate effect on B. So, uh, locality, this is normal. And if something is non-local, like uh, what, uh, what appeared in all this uh, other strange phenomenon of quantum, this is not, uh, this is, I would say, unacceptable. I want to have everything local. I don't want action at a distance. I want everything explained in this local matter. No action at a distance. Now, in fact, uh, with gravity, no problem. The gravity, today's physics explain well, gravity in a local uh, manner. Maybe not the general relativity, which is still, there is no quantum explanation of it. Uh, but uh, the Newton gravity, uh, which I say, Earth create field. This field is everywhere, in particular here, and then it's locally affects an apple. And so this apple gets acceleration according to second law of Newton. And uh, so it falls down. No problem. Local explanation for gravity. With quantum miracles, this is more difficult. So let's start um, discussing uh, in more details miracle number one. Um, Okay, why it's really a miracle? How we know about the presence of an object somewhere? Here we have to find the presence of this bomb. Usually we know, for example, we know that sun is present because we see the light coming from sun. We know that move is present because we see a light reflected uh, from moon. Sometimes we don't see anything and we still know about the presence. If moon absorbs light, which was supposed to come from sun, if you have an like eclipse, uh, then we also know about the presence of a moon. But look on our bomb. Our bomb interacts only through explosion, so it doesn't radiate anything. But also it explodes when any particle touches it, so it cannot reflect or it cannot absorb anything. So it seems impossible. This is a real miracle if we can find a bomb without exploding it. To find a bomb, in, uh, there is another kind of miracle, uh, quantum miracle, which help us to, uh, to, find, uh, to solve the miracle um, in, of, a, of this uh, bomb tester. And this other miracle is a Max Zender interferometer. Max Zender interferometer is not much a miracle. It was, uh, I don't know, 200 years old or maybe more. It's, um, you put light and there is interference. There is a light, beam splitter, uh, two mirrors, another light, and you can get interference. It became a miracle when we'll get it quantum. About, uh, more than 30 years ago, Aspect and Grandier showed that we get interference also with single photons. And uh, this seems a miracle. Why it seems a miracle? Because it seems that we understand how the interferometer works. We have a particle, it's sometimes reflected, uh, it's always reflected from a mirror, sometimes reflected from a beam splitter. And uh, what's special here is that here we have a beam splitter, so sometimes it's supposed to go here, but it never goes here. We try again, and uh, it's again go here. We try again, it's always go to this place. When we try to understand, it seems impossible, because we understand how the mirror works. 
we understand how the beam splitter works. We send it again. Beam splitter sometimes transmit and sometimes reflect photons. Uh, we can uh, do it many times and we see, we test it, we see it works from this side, it works from this side. It uh, always sometimes transmits, sometimes reflects 50%, 50%. So now we can construct our interferometer. We have one beam splitter, another beam splitter, so we can, uh, we can understand. So sometimes it comes here, here it might reflect it. And we can uh, try again, sometimes it might not come here. And um, so we expect when uh, that 25% will get clicked here, 25% here, and 50% will not get clicked at all. And this is what we see in experiment. It we see, we construct it in another way, putting mirror in the bottom. Again, we see 25%, 25%, and 50, half of it just lost here. So, we understand this, and we test this. We understand this, and we test this. So, if we we'll put things together, it seems that we have to get 50%, 50%. It turned out that if you tune it properly, then we get 100% here and 0% here. Classically, we cannot understand it. If it's come from here, it should 50%, from here 50%. So why, why it's never come here? Quantum mechanics resolve this Mark Zender interferometer miracle with single particle because it says that particles are waves. So what is really happening that our wave split in two and then interfere, waves interfere. This is easy. In fact, this is kind of the first step toward parallel uh, worlds. Uh, in quantum mechanics, we accept that our particle in some sense, both here and here. There are two options and it must take both of them. This is the only way to explain well, why it always comes here. Again, we have mirror, we have another mirror, we have beam splitter, another beam splitter, and this interference, uh, we really can, can see what's going on. Here we have, for proper tuning, we have two together, and, and then here they will be in opposite. So this wave will cancel, and this wave uh, will give us click. So, this is kind of the, uh, this miracle of a superposition. The particle here and here, kind of more forms of existence of eager. So in the sense, I want to buy it in the sense that there is an electron living both here and here. So this is our um, device which solve uh, the miracle of a bomb tester. Because when I block one of the paths, um, I don't get interference, nothing comes from here. And so this one will go to two sides. And the, the, this uh, detector, which before was forbidden, now can click. So Max Zender interferometer, well tuned. So one of the, uh, when one of the port is dark, is, is a bomb tester. So here I put another orientation, it's the same Max Zender interferometer. I send a wave, I really don't know where it is, quantum particle we don't see in the middle. It always comes here. So if I tune it in such a way that it always comes here. And I want to find the bomb. I, I check that the bomb no, nowhere except maybe in this place. It might be here or might not be here. So I built my interferometer such that one pass goes through this place. I test that every other place is empty. And uh, so I know if it's empty, then this cannot click. But if there is a bomb here, this can click. So I send the photo. Ah, I might be not lucky. This uh, device doesn't work 100%. In fact, uh, then it was improvement, uh, which uh, can then improve efficiency to any desired number. Uh, but this is not the important point. The important point is that sometimes it can work. 
you see here there is this uh, wave it's both here and here and essentially the bomb test if the particle here or not here and there is a chance that it will find that it's not here when it's not here nothing happened to a bomb we have a full particle here it will continue to go and then it has a chance uh, to reach uh, the forbidden the dark port if it's open and when we get this click uh, we know that the bomb is there we know that it's also nothing touched the bomb the bomb didn't explode we cannot find a photon both here and here okay uh, miracle number two impossible game the core of this miracle is this entanglement the third kind of uh, mystery of quantum mechanics and it's come from Einstein, Podolsky and Andor, uh, Rosen and uh, which uh, they had entangled uh, system out of this entangled system they come kind of uh, to the conclusion that the quantum mechanics is incomplete and they had a hope that it can be completed because um, while we have as uh, shown that the wave function does not provide a complete description of the physical reality we left open the question of whether or, or not such a description exists we believe however that such a theory is possible so they were looking what people usually called hidden variables in the end i will say the wave function is the whole story is a complete reality but again for this we will need parallel words so their hope was kind of killed by john bell because he showed uh, that no local hidden variable in the spirit of Einstein's idea can reproduce quantum mechanical partition for EPR, EPR correlation for all the orientation of polarizer. So essentially, Bell said that there is a miracle in quantum mechanics. There is kind of action at a distance, but many called spooky action at a distance. Spooky because we cannot send signals. Now, uh, the game which I present is really due to Grinberger Horn Zeilinger, uh, but it was really uh, then arranged by Merman. Uh, they had kind of a uh, game with four um, person. Uh, Merman uh, tra transferred it to three, and exactly to a game I transferred it uh, about 20 years ago. So this is, I will present a, um, a game. Uh, which is described in this paper if somebody wants to look more carefully. So uh, we have this Alice, Bob and Charlie, or this is really Greenberger, Horst and Zeilinger, pretty young, not like they look now. Um, and uh, they asked this question, which I was uh, told before. So in one particular moment, they're all far away. Some, the, another team come to them and ask them question, X or Y? Now, here there are some uh, restrictions also for the team because uh, they have to answer one and minus one as before. But the question, not all possible questions, there are possible, in principle, eight possible questions uh, different for all of them, but uh, there are only four according to the game. Either they all, all asked X, or only one of them asked X, and two of others asked Y. These are the rules of the game. So the team which will come to them, they don't know what will, they will be asked. The team knows, but the team has to be kind of correlated too, because they should ask only this type of question. Or at least only this type of questions will count. And for this question, um, they have to fulfill this table. And again, they may try, they will say, let's say, Alice will say plus, Bob will say plus, and uh, Charlie should say minus. So now x's are fixed. So y, let's say, will say plus. So y, uh, as a Charlie's y is fixed. Now Charlie y is fixed. Uh, we're left with uh, only Alice's y. So uh, from this equation, Alice's y should be plus. But if a plus put plus here, it doesn't work. And again, there is a simple mathematical proof. No way, they cannot prearrange they cannot be, they cannot know what they should answer before uh, they asked 
uh, there is no set of numbers which will fulfill it because you look there is this uh, again x a appeared twice in this equation i made the product of left side and product of right side here it's minus one and here there are products of there are only squares product of squares each one x c x c here and here everyone appear twice so cannot be done however quantum mechanics makes miracle somehow it does so so classically if it plays this game at least uh, at least 25 percent should be uh, failure quantum mechanics we can win always now how we do this and we have uh, we have to bring spin to alice bob and charlie so this spin is near alice somehow uh, it kind of run out but um, it's still greenberger had, can can look on it and make a measurement in it. and it has to be prepared in this special entangled state and then uh, what alice bob and charlie do they follow the following instruction if so, again they asked x or y so if alice asked x then uh, Alice measures spin in x direction of her spin. In entangled state, the spin is uncertain, uh, but she can make measurement. When she makes measurement, she gets answer. So she gets answer. If the answer is up, she says up. She says the an uh, x equal one. If she gets down, uh, she says x equal minus one. If instead she was asked why. She will make another measurement on her spin. She will make a measurement in y direction. And uh, again, if it's up, she will say one. If it's down, it will. Uh, she will say minus. And Bob and Charlie will do exactly the same. So when they come, they will just perform measurement. Um, then they ask uh, everyone has a spin half particles. So everyone will make measurement according to the question. And uh, so they will have the answers. Now I will not go over uh, this slide, but this is quantum mechanical proof that quantum mechanics somehow knows, arrange it, that this entangled GHD state, if you write it in a, in a basis of measurement, it always fulfill these rules the outcomes of this measurement sigma x sigma x sigma x must be always minus one this is a, this is a state in minus one this is what we have these four terms and you will see up up down up down up down up up and down 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 it's uh, three times minus so it's minus and here it's one time is minus one minus and one minus and for every basis this is how it Miracle. Quantum mechanics some, somehow knows how to do this. So, how I see the miracle? What is the most strange for me? You see, there is no way, even quantum mechanics, no one knows what to answer before the measurement. Because there is no way to fulfill this equation for spin. So, before the measurement, there is no number. There is no uh, uh, up or down. No one knows. The nature doesn't know it should be up and down. There is this, this kind of randomness. Now, if Alice and Bob, let's say, asked X and they performed their measurement. After they performed their measurement, it got minus. Charlie has no choice. The spin of Charlie must be, um, must, must be uh, minus 2, down in X direction. So before it was uncertain. In the moment, and they did it uh, simultaneously together. Alice and Bob measured. Charlie's spin have to jump to minus. This is clearly action at a distance. Before was one description. Now it's another description. This so the quantum me uh, mechanics has action at a distance. This is a miracle of uh, this uh, 
um, of this uh, co correlation game. Teleportation. Now, teleportation clearly a miracle. This kind of teleportation is impossible. It's science fiction. Why it's science fiction? We cannot have a body here and then, whoop, it disappears in one place and then appears in another place. Uh, the center of what something ha happens with the center of mass of the universe, it jumps. It cannot do this. We cannot, uh, matter cannot jump in space time. Now, what quantum mechanics tell us? Quantum mechanics tell us that the matter is not important. All electrons are the same, all protons are the same. I made out of electrons and protons the same like as the rock in the moon. All element, the matter is of the same thing. What's, what's different between me and the rock on the moon is a shape. I'm a pattern. I'm a pattern of this electron and protons. So if I want to look, move to a moon, there is no need to move my electrons and protons. All what is needed is to move just my wave function. I'm a wave function. So I'm a wave function here. All what I need is um, many particles in uh, any kind of, enough particles which uh, of my weight um, on the moon. And then um, just this particle will stay here, but um, there is kind of a way I can fax me here. So in principle, I mean, quantum mechanics tell us uh, that uh, we can fax people or objects or this kind of thing. However, this is uh, not, not so simple. In fact, uh, one cannot uh, clone there is no cloning theorem. There is there are difficulties. This is not as simple, uh, but um, let me just describe how the teleportation works to see what is a quantum miracle of teleportation. So this uh, actually, I see that there's a question. I mean, maybe right already now. I mean, Samuel, do you want to ask your question? Yes, I would like to ask this question. Uh, I remember you asking earlier in that case that in order for teleportation to occur, you're sort of transferring not necessarily the matter, but the information from one place to another in that case. Yes. And I'm certainly not experienced in quantum mechanics in that case, but I remember some others the is a no cloning theorem, where it basically says that you cannot clone information, quantum information in that case, or a quantum system. And one of example about would that disrupt the teleportation in that case if you're not able to have two bits of the same information at I'm trying to remember exactly yeah. I, I think uh, I will um, I, I will make it clear in te explaining teleportation I will say that um, how teleportation avoids uh, this problem all right great okay so uh, this is uh, the teleportation scheme of uh, um, Bennett, Brassard, uh, and all these uh, six, uh, six persons, including Kasher Perez from, uh, from Israel. Um, we use very strongly entanglement. So Alice and Bob were ready. They had some particles which were entangled, like in the previous game. The same game used entanglement with three particles. Here we need entanglement only with two particles. So they had this EPR uh, entangled pair. Now Alice wants to move a, a, a particle uh, from, uh, from her to, to Bob. So somebody gives her a particle. She doesn't know the particle. And uh, so she doesn't create another particle. In this process, what will happen? She make a measurement and she also makes some quantum measurement. It's called Bell measurement. And this Bell measurement involves a lot of entanglements. The next, next slide, I'll ex explain what it is. After this measurement, this quantum state will be destroyed in Alice's sight. Now, uh, information. Yes, there is information. Without information, Bob will get nothing. Alice have to send information. 
he has to send just two bits. And this is what will be my, my miracle. Alice got a quantum state. The quantum state is a direction of a spin. It's described by three numbers or maybe two angles. This two number, uh, this. And now she sends only two bits. And um, Bob gets these two bits. He makes some transformation to his particle. And out of this particle, he gets again this state. So there's no problem with cloning because we had state here and now we have only state here. There is no cloning of quantum state. It disappeared here, it was destroyed here and appeared here. Now, there is no kind of real problem with relativity because we do send information from Alice to Bob. It's, it's not faster than light. These two bits have to be sent with some, some time. The miracle, as I see it, is that we send um, a lot of information with just two bits. Just maybe add a little uh, more how it works. So, Bell uh, measurement, it's a uh, measuring of Bell operator which has four entangled states. And these uh, four entangled states, um, one is really like EPR state, it's, and the others are very similar. They essentially play the same role. So, um, explanation, in fact, it's kind of simple algebra. In the beginning, we have this quantum state in Alice, and we have this EPR state. So, we have this composite state of three particles. This composite state of three particles can be rewritten it's equal the same state. This state can be written in another form. Just decompose it according to the Bell states of particle number one and particle number two. This is Bell states. When we write it this way, then it will be multiplied, correlated to some other particle on Bob's side. What happened when if it's in EPR state, then it's correlated to the original this state which was here. If this any other Bell state, then it will be kind of rotated. Uh, states which were here. So now uh, all what we need to know is which outcome has happened. If we know which outcome has happened, we can restore our state because here the rotation around z axis, the pi rotation, uh, will give us uh, the state. Here will give us the state around x axis. If we perform this rotation in every case, we will get the same state here. So, state started here and end up here. Uh, maybe uh, this was uh, the original teleportation was for discrete variables. Uh, I am made of particles which uh, kind of can be everywhere, so it's continuous variables. So, I added to te teleportation something. So, in principle, we can move humans. Although I don't say it's possible at all, it's impossible for technical reasons. Um, and, and a similar idea, very similar, we prepare EPR state, continuous, the original EPR state from EPR paper, and then we have some uh, squeezed light, and uh, in this way we can move state from here to here. So, in principle, I'm here, we perform bell type measurement of continuous variables, we get this uh, many numbers, outcomes of this, and then uh, made some transformation and then and now I'm in the moon. Okay, this is not practical, but kind of this experiment have been done. And in this experiment, there is this miracle which I was uh, talking about. Alice may be far away from Bob. Alice gets a spin, the description of which uh, has this uh, uh, two numbers, so direction and space. She performs a measurement which can have only four possible outcomes corresponding to two bits. She sends these two bits and the Bob gets, uh, Bob makes some operation on his particle and uh, gets the particle. The particle which to describe needs information for two numbers. Infinite number of bits are moved 
to both by just by two bits. So, what is many words which help us to understand these issues? Uh, it was uh, discovered, but you ever read? And um, at least, and you can uh, look here in uh, Stanford Encyclopedia the way how I see it. Many words says there is a one physical universe with a big entangled wave function. All is just this wave function of the universe. And this universe evolves according to unitary deterministic Schrodinger equation. Now, it describes multiple worlds of the type we experience. So, this big wave function can be decomposed to the proposition of many other wave functions, which also describe everything, but they are in parallel. Each one corresponds to a world. Now, a world has special, it should, be, it should look like the world we know. World has macroscopic object, and all these macroscopic object must sit in one place. We cannot have Schrodinger cats in, in the world. There is no Schrodinger cat alive and dead. There are two worlds. In one, it's alive, and another, it's dead. Definition of world: all macroscopic objects are well localized. World is a single story, maybe experience of a single story. Universe is a tangled wave function evolving deterministically without action at a distance, if you look just on the wave function. On the other hand, it's also a superposition of all these non-local words splitting at measurements. Now, in quantum measurement, all possible outcomes happen with certainty, therefore there is no randomness. The randomness, this is uh, genuine randomness of quantum mechanics, is uh, randomness of outcome of quantum measurement. But it's deterministic because all measurement happened. In every outcome, uh, in all outcome happened, every outcome corresponds to a particular world. Now, inside the world, we feel illusion of randomness and action at a distance. Now, I would like to make a demonstration of many words, so maybe you'll feel it. And in my homepage, there is a word splitter. Unfortunately, now, uh, during Corona type, there is no access to it, but I still have access, so I will, uh, I will use it. Uh, so, I will make the experiment. So, I, uh, first I have to decide before, that when I put, uh, put a uh, type, uh, when I push the split, the world will be split. I can decide how it will be split, so I will say that if uh, there are two options, and I will write one left, and one right. Uh, what I mean by right is that my uh, video camera now is on right and I can move it on left and then you'll see maybe other part of my living room. Uh, so, uh, so I will perform now the experiment and I really believe that both will happen. In one world uh, we'll come, we will get left, in another world we'll get right. And uh, so I, you will, I will experience. Uh, you know, I will experience. There will be two of me, and uh, so I cannot say that I will experience this or this. There will be two of me. So let's perform the experiment. Right. Okay. So in this world, uh, I move it here back to right. And so all of you now with my right world. So you see me from this, from uh, from the right side. I believe that there is another me uh, which uh, has a camera on the left side and uh, on all the audience also with me and seeing from in another way. This is the meaning of many, of many words. Now, uh, what really happened in this uh, device conceptually is this kind of a quantum beam splitter. I send a particle and there is a single photon detector, it might detect it or it might not detect it. And depending on this, there is uh, one result and another result. Now, really, this is not exactly what it's here. There is a single photon detector, and this is important. And depending on timing, this is how I split the world. This is why, in principle, I can split in different up to six words. 
So the timing of when the single de the detector clicks, this is my quantum random event. Now, since currently there is no access uh, to uh, my world splitter, you can uh, buy one uh, if you have an uh, iPhone for two dollars. And they use random quantum random generator uh, of ID Quantique. Uh, is uh, Nicola Gizen uh, devised it and, uh, and has a company which selling this. But in fact, he had an interesting paper uh, six years ago and saying that if you have a modern iPhone or modern smartphone, the, the camera is sensitive enough to, uh, for a few photon level. Therefore, it's essentially like single photon detector. So you can use the camera. This is not simple because you really need to be very dark. But in principle, this is what, what they showed in the experiment. They took a, a photo camera for a smartphone and ma made random a quantum random generator out of it. Quantum random generator, this is really word splitter. Because when it gives you different numbers, it's different stories. Okay. Um, just very briefly to get some feeling about uh, many words. If I have this kind of experiment with two detectors and I decide before that if I see one of them, then I move to one place, I see another one, I move to another place. So in parallel, in the same place, there are both, there, are, there is this picture and this picture. They're all in the same space-time. Now, if uh, this one will go towards this one, it will not... Uh, one will say, you know, why there is no scattering between them? How they go across each other in the same space? This we can go to laboratory and test it. We can do it with neutrons. Now, uh, kind of... Uh, there is a neutron word here, a neutron word here, and here they crossed. The real neutron would scatter. Now we can test if these neutrons in different worlds scatter or not, because we can block, and now will be only neutrons of this type. So we can make experiment, and uh, what we will see is the statistics in B does not change at all if we block or not block. Maybe another conceptual experiment of many worlds is let's say with this we do this experiment, we get these clicks. And uh, now we want to test the many world. How you test the many world? How you test that um, we get both click here and here? Now, conceptually very simple, technologically very difficult. We need a device which undo the experiment. We have to erase the memory, undo it. If it was photo multiplier, it have to un completely undo everything which was done. So. Uh, but uh, before this, uh, we have we will replace here we had a source, and we replace it by two detectors, one here and one here. And now we undo the measurement. The photons go back. If the many words is true, then we'll get interference of these photons which uh, come from our detectors backward. So. Only this detector will click. This detector will never click. So, not today and not in any near future we can perform this experiment, but in principle such experiment exists. So, how many words solve our uh, miracles? Miracle, change of, uh, of a spin state by remote action. You remember, uh, Alice and Bob made measurements and uh, Charlie's spin changed. And this happened immediately. And what many words says? Many words says uh, that when we perform a measurement, uh, sometimes in parallel world, we can get another outcome. We can get this out, up and here we get down. And so then in Charlie, it will be up. There are, in fact, four, po four possibilities. Alice and Bob can get up and down, uh, Bob can get up and down. 
for every possibility, Charlie's is fixed because we know it's this is a, the, the whole story. Um, these two fixed, and this fixes the, the, the last one. So, if we look on all words together, there are uh, four different situations, two possible outcomes here, two possible outcomes here, two possible, it's both down, both up, but the different colors, different words. So, if we look on all words together, there is a mixture here for Charlie of four possible spins. This mixture is identical to what was before. There is no miracle because uh, the mixture of this thing is identical to this uh, um, EPR state, the GHD state, which, which happened before. Before it was this state, this was before, and this is was after. Before we had uh, this type of state, after we had this type of state, but they are the same. So there is no difference. Teleportation. Uh, in teleportation, um, what is a miracle? Here we have a lot of information, we use only two bits and it's moved here. But what is really and how it's done by bell measurement? We make this bell measurement and this bell measurement makes this miracle. The spin somehow moved here. It's more or less the same, you see. Now we get this kind of spin, maybe sometimes rotated, different other, but the bell measurement rotate, moved uh, spin to, to, uh, to Bob. Now, if we look on all words together, we get a mixture of all these four spins. One the, as it's supposed to be tra transferred and uh, three others rotated around th three axes. This is the same as the original state. Originally, it was an EPR state. An EPR state was a mixture of up and down. This mixture and this mixture, it's exactly the same quantum state. So, the bell measurement doesn't do anything. Before, after, we had the same kind of state here. Uh, what changed, these two bits tell, told us in which world we are. This, 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 or this. And there are only four different words. So, bell measurement changed nothing on Bob's side in physical universe, which includes all four words. The two bits tell, tell us in which world we are. We have no miracle when we look on all words together. Um, now, in Elitzer Weidman Bob Tester. So, we send, uh, in, when we are lucky, we send this photo and uh, this is when we are not lucky. So this is when we were lucky. When we lucky, when we were lucky, we get this click here, no explosion, and we know that the bomb is here. But sometimes we are not lucky. What is it sometimes? Not sometimes, in parallel words, we are not lucky. So there are, every time we perform this experiment, there are several words, in this time, three different words. In one, there is explosion. In another, um, we are lucky, and when the dark detector clicks, and in another one, another detector, which is, we don't know. Anyway, there is a word in which it was explosion. So if you look at all words together, the photon was here. Um, our intuition comes from uh, physics, which describe all words together. No miracle. Conclusions. Miracles uh, within a single world. In Elitzer Bomb, uh, Weidman Bomb Tester, uh, the miracle is that we get information about the presence of a bomb in a particular location without any particle being there. In Bell Theorem, um, the nature apparently random and it has some kind of action at a distance because a measurement of uh, Alice and Bob kind of uh, fix uh, what uh, the result in a run, uh, in a Charlie in a Charlie's place, and the teleportation we transfer a huge amount of of in fact unreadable you know no cloning we cannot find the state but the state is moved and to describe the state we need a lot of information. Now in many words if you look on all words together, all this disappears. There is no 
randomness on a level onwards together. Still, we can understand why we experience randomness. We have illusion of randomness and low action at a distance in our world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Len. <coughs> very, very interesting talk. So, so of course, a few questions in the chat and also if, uh, if one which we'll get to, but if anybody wants to ask to raise your hand, of course, please do it at the same time. Uh, so let me go through, through um, uh, the chat box. Um, yes, yeah, so there was a, a, a question, but uh, a few comments, but there's also a question by Ken. And, um, Ken, Ken, do you want to ask your question? Uh, let's see. I, I guess the question, it was that original bomb tester, or one of the slides, and uh, it, all, it seemed like you said, and this proves an, elect, uh, an electron must be both here and here. And I did, didn't see the exact uh, proof, the, the, what caused you to be sure there was uh, an elect, the same electron. Were you saying one electron is both in one place and another at the same time? Okay. Uh, Those, that one went way back. Might have been that one. Yes, yeah, just let me yeah, put it this way. Uh, so, uh, the way really, even without, uh, without discussing uh, the, the, <coughs> without dis the discussing um, the the bomb tester. Uh, the reason why uh, I kind of understand, I, why I think that it must be uh, that uh, we have a electron both here and here is because um, to explain how a Max Zender interferometer with single particle works. Uh, we understand well every object. We understand that this is a beam splitter. So when the particle comes from here, it has a 50% 50, um, 50 chance go through. So if we'll have only particle from here, it can click. If we have only particle from here, it also can click because it has 50% chance reflected. But we run it many times and it's silent. In my laboratory, we get 98% uh, visibility of this kind of inter interferometer. Okay. How it, ca how it can be explained? There is no any other explanation by this picture. What's happened here is interference. We need two waves to interfere. One, so for this, we need one wave come from here and one wave come from here. If there is no wave which come from here, like here. Right. This cannot be dark. The only way is that this is dark, when, when these things, uh, when, uh, when we get uh, one from here and one from here, there is something to interfere. There are two waves and these two waves can interfere. They can increase also uh, the probability here because here, we get, if each one come here, it's only 50%. Each one from here, it's only 50%. When two are here, we'll get 100%. And the only way it's uh, that before there is no kind of other reason, uh, other way which I know to explain the interference. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. I mean, I, I, actually, Ron, you also had a few questions before. Um, yeah, I'll, let me th thank you for visiting us and thank you so much for this talk. I guess my main question had to do with the experiment that might confirm the existence of multiple worlds where you were undoing um, the collapse or the measurement at the end. And my question was, doesn't that require time to go backwards? And if not, how do you know you're not just going forwards into other multiple worlds from which you could never see the ones you think? Um, uh, just let me maybe come to this and repeat it. So let me see where it's, no, then probably it's after it.
Right, I think that was it. I think it's this one. Yeah. So let's repeat the experiment. So I send the particle forward in time, everything is normal. Now it's better, previously, you remember, I had this very similar thing with, mm, uh, no, with, which, with person, sorry. Here I had this person. I looked on it and it moved here and here. Of course, this, time, this is too bad, now it's too late. I will not be able to undo this because to undo this experiment, I have to erase my memory. I have to move back and create only, now there are two of me and I have to create only one of me. So this experiment is like this, but uh, more careful. This part is not there. And so I, I, I made this experiment, but it's isolated. I'm not, I don't look on the result. But, but even, uh, even, that experiment, even that experiment presumes multiple worlds, the single photon without multiple worlds ends up either at A or B and not at both. Okay. What is the word? The word is when uh, we have macroscopic object in some different location. By definition, in every word, every macroscopic object has well different states. So here we have kind of photomultiplier, which we consider as macroscopic object. It cannot be in one word, both uh, click, see, sync particle and not sync particle. This will be different words. Therefore, right. even there is no person, there is no anyone, there is only this macroscopic photomultiplier uh, that uh, in the, now they're all ready. So it was one word. But now there are two words because in one word this clicked and this is not. And you, you don't see it on the picture, but really what's happening here, when this is clicked, this is not. And when this is clicked, this is not. But clearly it's two words. This is why I draw. There is a clicked photomultiplier here. There is a clicked photomultiplier here. They correlated. When this clicked, this one is not clicked. And this clicked when this is not clicked. Now, what is my uh, undoing? It's all forward in time. I don't play with, uh, um, I'm not trying to put um, time backward or anything like this. I have a device which <coughs> erase the memory of my photo multiplier. Uh, you know, in spin echo, we see something similar. It's looked like something happened, but we can undo this. Photo multiplier is a big device. So it's very difficult to erase the whole memory. And in the end, it should, uh, kick the photon out, if the photon is there. So my Hamiltonian should be, uh, it, it, so I have to apply this Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian applied for every kind of photomultiplier, clicked or not clicked. And the device is that if it's clicked, it should cli uh, kick the photon out. If it's not clicked, it's supposed to do nothing because it was not clicked. This is how it works. And there is one here and one here. So if everything works properly and there is, uh, uh, then we'll get superposition. Uh, both photo multipliers erase their memory, and we have superposition of this original photon, which come uh, here. This uh, will will go backward. This is how you can you see it. now it's erased, and now they go backward because there is one from here and one from here. It will be interference here. Why it's many word tester? If because of GRW or any other thing, there is a collapse, my super device still should work. But if it's collapsed, the, uh, one, there is, will be photon only in one place. So in the return, we'll get photon only from here or from here. Then it has a 50% chance not to come here and to go here. So if we consider kind of a very simple measuring devices, which are really microscopic, uh, like people to, today, there are many papers of Wigner friend and whatever, and Wigner's friend are just photon polarization. This kind of experiment can be done, but th I, they will say nothing. For me, it really needs to be a macroscopic device, which we, which we undo. In this Wigner friend experiment, people really undo, they erase their memory. So they do this kind of experiment, but for de devices which are not macroscopic, so they don't really tell us much about uh, uh, if it's many words or it's a collapse theory. I think I understand, but this means in the two worlds that split, 
both those macroscopic detectors are doing the same Hamiltonian, both of them are ejecting, and then you'd have to see the interference that way, right, in those two parallel worlds. Correct. And what will, no, but, but the, what's important here, we had one world before, before, because the two detectors were ready. Then there were two worlds, because in one world this clicked and this not, and, and this click on this not. After this event, we again have one word. This testing of many, word, uh, many words, we need interference of words. So from now on, there will be only one word. You cannot say what's happened. In two, there, was, there was a particular time when there were two words, but now there is again only one word. Only we started with one word, created two. And when we undo the measurement, we come back to one word. Two words were created, were existing for some time because they were microscopic and they were microscopically different. Thank you so much. Thank you much for the question. So actually, I had it was another question, but I mean, very much related to what you just said. I mean, um, by Gerardo Ortiz, who couldn't be here, so he, he he was asking what you can say about Wigner's friend paradox. But I, I guess you partially addressed that. But, but maybe if you want to expand that also, I guess. Yeah, um, I think the Wigner's friend paradox is a kind of interesting phenomena. Many words has no difficulty whatsoever. What it says uh, when uh, somebody in, in Wigner's friend paradox, we have like EPR pair and uh, um, even the not EPR pair. We just essentially this kind of. Uh, uh, this kind of thing, uh, let's say Alice performs this experiment, we add a person here. Like if uh, we had this, uh, let's say, when I go here, yes, yes, this is kind of situation. So, uh, there is a Wigner friend. Wigner friend performs this experiment. And so now he is in two words. According to Wigner, Wigner has super, super, super technology. He can undo not just photomultiplier, he can just make quantum measurement on people. So he can testify, he can test this kind of quantum state. So he finds, if he has a super technology, he finds that as a fr his uh, friend in a superposition. And uh, so um, now the, the question, if you talk about uh, if uh, what is the semantic of many words? Everett, for example, uses many words relative to an observer. And then, um, so for relative to the friend, of course, there is one word and another word, but relative to the super technology of uh, Wigner, uh, there is a one Wigner friend in which the friend in a superposition. In my semantics, friend, uh, every word, every microscopic object is well localized. So in this situation, we have two words, we also have this superpower of Wigner, who can make out of these two words one word if he because if he can test it and maybe undo the experiment. Uh, but uh, now, so from from my point of view, there are two words uh, in one uh, A friend and B friend, and uh, Wigner can test it. Now, maybe it's not politically correct to say, but there is a big uh, now many many papers and. Uh, many, uh, some not small number of experiment on Wigner kind of friend papers with different variation in which uh, all of them this friend is just kind of a photon with, with polarization. I don't see that they uh, teach us something and they say they all have say that it, when observer get an outcome this outcome must exist. If the observer is a photon polarization I, I don't I don't think it tells us much. So I think Wigner, uh, original Wigner friend, is a very nice uh, example and can be uh, analyzed and many words helps to analyze it. And I don't see that all this new development uh, added uh, something significant. Thank you, Lev. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, are there other questions? So, uh, you Anybody wants to ask? I mean, you can just unmute yourself and ask a question if you want. Uh, 
uh, okay, I guess in that case, uh, well, let's all thank Lef again for a very, very interesting talk. So, uh, <laughs> sort of, uh, uh, sort of, uh, no, thank you much, Lef, for doing this. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. And, and this record, this talk is recorded and will be also in that list of talks that you saw uh, before. Okay, so 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 I'll see you. Uh, so all all of you also next. Uh, oh, somebody. Oh, not, uh, uh, Chef Watov. Yes, <laughs> yes. So 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 uh, so I'll see all. We will meet again uh, next week, next Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so thank you very much, and and thank you very much, Liv. Thank you.